Good morning, folks. We are 100% focused on the sun today as the active region on the north has continued firing solar flares after growing to its potential yesterday morning. Here, we've put a 131 angstrom X-ray flare view on top of the sunspots and you can see how it's the group of numerous smaller spots, all mashed together, that is releasing those events. Since last night's update, another M-class flare has occurred and we still expect more, especially with several sunspot groups on the disk and the flare maker still with both magnetic polarities crammed in and interacting. Of the now seven M-class solar flare events, only two have produced coronal mass ejections, CMEs. The first one, and the one that erupted right at the turn of the day UTC, are coming at Earth. If you didn't catch last night's update or didn't stay until the end, we are almost sure to get geomagnetic storm activity, but it's almost certain to be minor. The only caveat is that more flares and CMEs may erupt. If we get more CMEs heading our way, the geomagnetic risks will increase. You may recall that the solar flares hit the interplanetary magnetic field connection between the Earth and Sun and surged a proton radiation storm at the poles. It was only a low-level event and has already descended back down below the storm threshold. Of course, the story to come is the CMEs. We saw both eruptions on SOHO, both are halo events, suggesting that they are indeed heading at Earth. There appears to be a slightly faster speed to the second one as shown on Stereo A satellite, and NOAA has updated their Enlil spiral to show both eruptions, and a quasi-combined impact Thursday morning. Density shocks merge, slight separation to the speed peaks there on the model. Whether they hit in succession or combine into one, we should get minor geomagnetic activity, but nothing close to anything scary. We do still expect more solar flares, and we'll be watching for any more CMEs they release. A quick moment to answer your questions on weather, seismic, and biological effects of these events. Well, those took 300 pages and 500 citations, with me being choosy, and there's about to be a supplement updating that book, and the next end of the world. There are too many meteorological connections and forcing pathways to mention them all here, but the biological effects are clear and worth mentioning. So far, the number one effect of this event has been the solar flare ionization. As long as the flaring uptick lasts and for a day or two afterwards, high-risk cardiac and mental patients are at major risk for adverse events. And all biological life is subject to moderate cognitive loss and moderate to severe emotional instability. You know anyone who lost it yesterday? The collection of the best peer-reviewed science on solar forcing and the disaster cycle is at otf.cells.com. And coming soon, the new two book updates in one supplement. We greatly appreciate your support. That's otf.cells.com. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.